time in a while. This could cause problems, but nobody's around. Let me test this out here. If I go to YouTube on here, it's going to say that I'm live. If I hit your videos or something. Tell me I'm live. I'm not live, I don't know. It doesn't say I'm live. Hmm. Weird. Problems. Here it goes. Ah. So let's see if I can hear myself. If the music's kind of oh, this is going to cause problems. Here it goes. Ah. Oh, it's an ever going loop of craziness. Yes, the loop is happening now. It's an ever going loop of craziness. But it's working. that nobody's listening anyway we're testing this out this is a live stream middle of the night yeah. and bring this down now I should be louder one person viewed it that was me <laughs> That's great. Welcome to live chat. Reminder to guard your privacy and abide by community standards. Okay, if I don't want to learn more. Oh no, why do I have to learn more? I don't really have to learn more. Okay. Hope that window doesn't go away for some reason. Whatever. Average view duration, five seconds. This is going well. Look at this beautiful camera bouquet. This should have four billion people watching it right now. If you were on the other side of the screen and an actual person, I would see you. But I don't see anybody black hole of a camera. Mm. When I speak, things are getting distorted in these headphones. I'm just talking to myself now so I can check this out later and see what went on here. What's going on? Oh, wow. Colors are kind of weird on these cameras. <sighs> this is the back part, so the light's not really shining on this part very well. But look at that. There's lots of 
to me is in there. Well, to me is. Me is. Me. Me. Here. That's me. I really need to put it in this way. Oh, scratch it off. Oh, there we go. So the audio cuts out on these headphones, but I don't think it's cutting out in the actual feed. The feed. Welcome to the feed. This is an internet live video. This is the live video from the internet. Welcome to the internet. It's the end of the day. In the middle of the night. The night. I wish I could figure out a better way to uh, hear it in real time and really test this out, but it's difficult to figure out exactly what's going on here. Because I keep hearing myself delayed for about two seconds, which is normal, but annoying. Certain things are working now. Hey, look, there's Steve there. Never made one of these live before. Audio sounds fine. Oh, good. Thanks, man. That's that's awesome. At least the audio sounds fine. I haven't fired this up in months. I don't even know how many months, but it's been a while. And I just kind of came in here, turned everything on, was surprised that everything still worked and wasn't too dusty and and here we are Kokoma, Indiana Wow, it's Kokoma, Indiana What do you do in Kokoma, Indiana, my friend? What goes on in Kokoma, Indiana? I'm probably not saying that right I'm guessing that's a Indian term or Native American term. But hello from Weddington, North Carolina. About 15 miles southeast of Charlotte. The suburbs. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm happy to answer questions have any right now. I've got my full attention as my one concurrent viewer. So Steve, shoot away. Ask me anything. Miscellaneous, at least. I'll try not to confuse myself with these headphones. If I put on the other headphones, as long as you're saying the audio is working okay. Can, oh, wow. There goes a microphone onto the ground. not doing anything. Uh, if I put on these other headphones, I won't be so incredibly confused. Uh, I should still be able to hear the music. As long as you say you can still hear me, my friends out there. Now I have two people watching. Two people watching the Tuba Dylan broadcast. Very exciting. The audio of my voice is loud enough and the music's not too distracting. I would guess. I hope. Oh yeah, Kokomo. That makes more sense. <laughs> There's a song, right? <laughs> Kokomo. <laughs> well, thank you for that correction. Uh, that's just absolutely terrible. <laughs> but that's, that's all right. It's late, you know. Yeah, it's the Beach Boys song. That's right. There's a song. Down in Kokomo. Mm -hmm. Except that we're nowhere near the Florida Keys. You probably 
we'd want to be near the Florida Keys right now because there's some cold air coming through there, right? I would guess from what I saw in the weather report today. But uh, yeah, what do you do there in Indiana? Do you play the tuba? Do you play music? Do you just hang out and watch YouTube videos? Or you don't have to tell me, whatever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, I'm just on the air now. I haven't been on for a long time. I don't have anything planned. I don't uh, have anything planned to talk about or anything planned to play. I'm just almost shocked that the studio is still up and running and all my cameras, you know, if you, if you have never tuned into my live show, I set up this studio, which is also my office where I work, to uh, uh, run, I think I have 10 4K cameras in here hooked up to this live stream, and I'm not, I'm not kidding. Look at all these cameras I've got in here. I've got like ones, this is the sort of behind my setup, so you can see where I'm sitting from back here behind it. Uh, let me read what you're saying here, Steve. In scenic Kokomo, I play tuba guitar, bass guitar. Oh, very nice, yeah. I have a lot of instruments. It doesn't mean that I play them all well. I play the tuba pretty well. And uh, I can play trumpet and trombone uh, better than most amateurs, but probably not quite as good as professionals. Um, but I can fake it if I have to play trumpet or trombone. I can sort of sound professional by accident if I need it, if I really need to. Um, but yeah, it's, it's good to have diversification in music. I think if I just played the tuba, I'd be kind of bored. Um, maybe if I just played the piano, because you can play so much on it, I might be okay with that. And I, I love the guitar, especially the acoustic guitar. Uh, and it's just a terrible challenge for me. I feel like a complete beginner always. And I've used it to write songs and you know, whatnot but I just can't play guitar too well. But I, I, you know, I like having a variety of musical instruments. Ooh, electrical engineer, that's excellent. Hybrid and EV parts, that's far out. Yeah, design teams, wow, that's pretty cool. We have some engineer friends. I have one friend who worked at Boeing for quite a long time. He was a mechanical engineer and they hired him to work on satellites and um, yeah, one of the tuba players in my local community band, Matthews, is an engineer. He's a civil engineer, I believe. They're all so different, right? But electrical is super interesting, especially in the day and age of computers and uh, the dielectric and magnetism. I'm sure you know some things about those things. And, um, Nikola Tesla and Charles Proteus Steinmetz, some of the heroes of electric engineering and magnetism. Yeah, I like acoustic, that's my preference, yeah. All engineers are civil, that's good. You're being very civil to me, I appreciate it. <laughs> I think musicians are relatively civil. Uh, people who make a life out of playing music, now, I don't know, they're, Hitler play an instrument? He probably did, you know? And he's like the world's most evil person, at least in what people talk about as far as the, it's just pulling the most evil people out of the air. Um, there are people who probably kill more people than Hitler as far as being in charge, like Mao and Stalin, perhaps, who knows? Um, but yeah, well, I don't know why I'm talking about him. <laughs> Oh, because engineers are civil, because you said that engineers are civil. Uh, well, you know, Hitler reference, yeah, I, I don't mean it towards you or anything, but <laughs> I'm just tangentially going off into different places because I'm talking to a box, well, I'm talking to a person here, which is pretty cool, but actually just talking to a box, what the way I'm looking at it. Genesis Khan, oh, played kazoo, so I heard. Well, I guess uh, Genesis Khan, I'm guessing, is Genghis Khan. And uh, 
I had never heard that he played kazoo, but maybe the chromatic harmonica, uh, or maybe the juice harp. I play the juice harp, I really enjoy that. I have one just right over there. But yeah, I play the juice harp. That's a pretty cool instrument. I, I've been strumming on my guitars of late and, and just making no progress. It's probably because I have no, no real instruction or plan. I just sort of sit there and try to make nice sounds. And sometimes there's some nice sounds, other times just terrible, just terrible sounds. But I like comparing my different guitars and listening to them. Uh, same thing with my horns and things. There's something so cool about how things are made to make sound, the way they're built, the way they're designed, the way it all comes together, the way the materials and the size of the materials and so many different things change the sound. And yet, as the actual instrumentalist, 95% of that sound is like what you're doing on it for the most part like unless you're playing piano you're just pushing buttons and stuff so autocorrect yep yeah. oh you don't have to worry about that no one's watching us anyway so yeah I mean I wonder if I went on live all the time and I you know every day had some sort of plan like oh I'm gonna show off this instrument today on my live stream it would turn into something interesting uh, oh man Tommy Emmanuel is so absolutely fantastic yep uh, now Phil Kiki I think I've heard that name um, I watched the Tommy Emmanuel video last night uh, he was playing I think that I was I watched one where he was playing with Chet Atkins I think it was no, he was in a, uh, a interview with Chet Atkins, and he played a Chet Atkins tune. Chet Atkins didn't play, uh, but what a that guy makes the guitar look like it's so easy. Like I watch him, and he just I don't know. He's in the zone all the time. I kind of know what that's like because I've played tuba solos that I've worked really hard on or other brass instruments where I'll get in the zone and play all the way through my solo and sort of not even have memory of doing it and I'm guessing that Emmanuel when he's playing that guitar he's constantly in the zone because he doesn't look like he's putting out any effort it's just muscle and music memory just flowing through him uh, because both his hands are, and they're, he's an older guy now, and his hands look older, but they're just, have the such a beautiful touch and such a great sound on that, what do you play, a Matones guitar, whatever they call it, I don't know, that Australian guitar. Uh, it's just, he's amazing, I don't know. But I, I, yeah, I'll have to check out uh, this Phil Keegy. That might be interesting. Haven't heard about Phil Keegy, but I find, I find guitars even more interesting than brass instruments. Even though brass instruments, if you think about it, seem like they, they're more difficult to make in a way, because I think that someone could theoretically, with the, with the right, just regular everyday hand tools, go off into the woods, and if they had access to some big dead trees, and they actually really knew what they were doing, could build a guitar. But, but you couldn't build a tuba if you were out in the middle of nowhere by yourself. There's just no way, or a tuba mouthpiece or whatever, to, to create the metal and everything else. So that, there's something really fundamentally human and earthy about, about the guitar and the acoustic wood instruments that I just love. I just love it. Tuba question, Con 56J versus Miraphone 1292 New Yorker. Yeah, I know both those horns. If you've played both, I assume the Con 56J has similar to the... 
Yeah, uh, Eastman 832. I think the Han 56J is a little more similar to the 632 Eastman, which I actually have downstairs. I don't have it up here. Um, the 8, the 830, yeah, I'll, 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 I'm thinking about it, the compare and contrast. The 832 is more like a smaller York style where the 632 is, I, I think Matt Walters designed it with Eastman, with kind of based on the older cons, but also based on some other things. But the bell itself, I think, is definitely based on that con. Yeah, the first one, 632. Okay, so that's right. Um, I have played, well, I've played my 632. I love that tuba. Uh, I was just playing it Monday night in my community band. I, I sort of switched tubas off. So the last concert I played the Mac Brass, a little six, three quarter C tuba. This time I'm playing the uh, Eastman. Uh, and the thing I really like about, well, there's a couple of things I really like about the Eastman. Um, but a lot of these modern tubas are like this now. They just play so much, so much better in tune than the first few tubas that I had um, back, that were built in the old days, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, when I was young and started out. So the tubas I have now play really well in tune. And I'm going to tell you, I would, I would guess that the Eastman will play better in tune than the Con. And it... It's probably better built. I hate to I hate to say it that a Chinese instrument is going to be better built than an American instrument, but do they even make those anymore? And are they made in the USA? I don't I don't even know. Uh, they might still make them. The cons, Eastman, of course. I'm going to turn the music down a little more. Eastman, of course, is uh, just doing leaps and bounds of great business around the world for, for tuba playing. Uh, yeah, 56J to the 632 and the 8. I think the 832 is more of a four-quarter York style. So I think that's similar to the Hirschbrunner four-quarter piston valve C tubas. Uh, maybe like the Ursus? that Alan Bear made, uh, which is a four quarter that Minel Weston makes. I, I haven't played too many Minel Weston tubas and uh, I've played a few and was never so impressed, even though there's so many great players that play on those things. But uh, in comparing the Con and the Miraphone, the New Yorker, there's a New Yorker, the 1292. There's also a 1293. I, I don't know. Is that the New Yorker Plus or something? That has something different on it too. But I've played a 1291 double C. I'm going to say I haven't played the New Yorker one, but I would definitely expect it to play better than the 1291. Um, you're going to acquire a New Yorker unless there are any surprises. I think I'll end up with more core, brighter, more light. So you're playing the con now, I see. Yeah, well, the velvetiness. So there's always trade-offs in different instruments in the sound. There's always going to be a trade-off. 1293 is the 1292 with a 20-inch bell. I see, okay. Yeah, so if you want to maintain some of that, I guess, velvetiness, you would probably go with the bigger bell. Well, that's one. Well, what I was getting to. One of the reasons I like the 632 so so much, besides that it plays in tune, um, has a pretty decent low register, uh, and it's just just super easy to play. The valves are the shortest throw valves I've ever played on a tuba, and they're probably the fastest valves I've ever played on a tuba. But that big pancake bell gives it some of that real velvety tubby tuba tone that's really kind of cool. Yeah, I like the Wyvern. Now, the Wyvern... Are you getting this, this New Yorker 
as your sort of everyday everything tuba or you have orchestral aspirations uh, the wyvern to me did not feel like a great everyday tuba it was a five quarter it was a little bit big and bulky so you're kind of getting into the this is kind of a bit big a bit harder to hold you know that's another compromise so you want to play a big tubby tuba like a six quarter york brunner or something like that it's going to be harder to hold and harder to keep everything in tune keep everything together dump the dump the water and all those things so yeah the smaller bells will give you more snap more projection uh that gets you a little closer to the sound of the trombone section as opposed to the bigger the bell uh, and the more sort of wide open that bell flare is the more of a velvety sort of soft tubby I don't know where the sounds coming from kind of thing community band church groups quintet Five valve Yamaha E flat. Ooh, that's nice. Okay. Peter Gregg, hi, how you doing? <laughs> oh yeah. I love Peter Gregg. He's a really cool camera guy. Uh the phone is, is probably a really good all-around choice. Uh I love my my Miraphone Bruckner tuba. It's It takes more air than any of my other tubas, even more than my six quarter tubas. But it's really light. It's really easy to play. Uh, it's so simple and ergonomic. So if I'm if I was playing it in a Oktoberfest band or something where I was playing all day long, just nonstop, and have to just keep playing and dumping water all day that horn all the water goes down the bottom and i always say that's a pretty important thing being that i have so many tubas that i have to spin around pull out all these different slides to find out where all the spit goes you know it's good to see you peter i love your show still and uh it's really cool to see all the updates on your cameras <laughs> uh yeah, the Bruckner's kind of like the New Yorker with rotary valves. Yep. And it, one of the cool things about it, and I think the New Yorker has it too, is that the top bow of the tuba has a strange angle in how it curves round. It's not, most tubas will just have a curved tube that's kind of, you know, curved naturally like a rainbow. This thing, it kind of curves and, it, and then when it gets to the top, it kind of goes straight down and has a little bit of a sharper turn. And the folks at Miraphone, because the Bruckner I have was, I think, a very first one shipped to the United States. The very first one. So I, I talked to them about that horn quite a bit, even when it was in development, because it was kind of what I was looking for at the time. And... Yeah, it has a it has a weird slant on that top bow, and I think the story behind the slant has something to do with the tuba getting damaged at one time, and having the low range. I wouldn't say open up, but become easier to play. Uh, something about the back pressure. Uh, but somebody had a top bow that got bent or damaged and it it made one of their engineers or whoever works on those horns think, well, what if I just, we build the horn and we sort of make a sharper turn up there or something like that. That's a little more like whatever happened to that horn that got damaged and sounded better. And uh, I think it worked out well for them. Yeah, th that horn even though it has a pretty big bore, I don't know, the, the bore is gradual, but it gets into the 800s on that tuba, which is more than any tuba I have. Uh, that horn takes a ton of air, but all of the low notes, all the way down to the G below the 
bottom of the piano, like below the piano range, in the pedal range, are easy to play. You don't have to do, like on some of my tubas, to get some of those notes between pedal C and low C, I have to do armature shift, where I have to push my armature up and stick my lip out to get it to really play solid and loud. And that's a normal thing, like all the great players, most of them will do an armature shift. But on that particular tuba, that Bruckner, don't have to do that on the low notes. They just come out naturally. It's almost amazing, you know. It's one of the other reasons I love it. So you said the 1291 had this too. I heard the feature helped performance of the horn long ago was Miraphone's claim. I, yeah, it does. It helps, it helps with the low register. I don't know about the rest of it, I, but I get that feeling. Hey, Peter. Do you update your computer at all? Oh, that's a good question. So much new stuff hit the market the last six months. I'm still using what the Apple Mini M1 works well. That's good that you got an M1. I'm not giving him any more money. He 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 he. Um, I'm gonna switch some cameras around just for fun. See this, Peter? I, got, I still got all these cameras set up. Check it out. I still have ten of these in here. I mean, this is just four, and with the Sling Studio I've got here. I've got like, I've got like this puppet camera, extreme close-up, weird camera, like up here at the top. I'm gonna go up there and I'll answer your question about my computers in an extreme close-up, just because you'll get a kick out of it. Watch this. Now this was like my puppet camera, so I have puppets in here, and I used to try to do a puppet show. It was the worst puppet show on earth, but I have this camera up here that you can see there, where I can bring a puppet into it, the view of it, and that's a GH4. So the autofocus is crummy, but eventually it'll pick up on Mr. T here. Come on, Mr. T. You're going to get Mr. T in there? Come on, autofocus. Mr. T. He's not going to focus, is he? No, he's not going to focus. He's not going to focus. Is he going to focus? No. It will It'll probably focus if I stand up. Let me check it out. Too. There we go. <laughs> Extreme close-up, extreme. This is a GH4 with the 1.4 original Leica lens that came with uh, when that camera first came out. I still have that lens, good lens. Believe it or not, GH4 autofocus, extreme close-up. You asked about computers. Uh, I'm running a Mac Pro in my setup down here. Uh, 2015 Mac Pro down here several monitors off of that uh, laptop. I have two trash can Mac Pros uh, over in the other part of my studio. If you see, see the other setup with the chair over there where my keyboard is and all those monitors that are doing the twirly whirly thing. Yeah, that, I, there I have two trash can Mac Pros, 2013s, both which I maxed out and paid 10,000 bucks a piece for in 2013 when I got them. Uh, 64 gigs of RAM, uh, one terabyte hard drive in 2013, that was a bigger deal. Uh, both, both of those computers have gone back to Apple. One of them has gone back twice, the other one has gone back three times and been replaced. And uh, they both work and I still, believe it or not, use them. My everyday work, I use a 2013 Mac Pro uh, downstairs, I've got a 2019 i9 $6,000 Mac laptop that has been made totally obsolete by the M1 and 2 chips um, and is super, super sucks energy and it's super loud when the, when the fan goes on on that thing. So the, the trouble that I have the most is that I have so much high-end audio equipment much of which is on Thunderbolt and some of which is still on Firewire and still working. And a lot of this equipment tells me that when I switch to whatever the M1 computers are, it might not work. So that frightens me because I have so many really good old, older preamplifiers and I kind of like using them or at least when I do use them. So, you know. All right, I'm gonna sit 
down now so that I can see what you're writing. <laughs> okay. There we go. Uh, what do we have here? Yeah, okay, so Steve's still asking questions here. 770 to 835 Rotary 5th. Yeah, that's that's a that's a serious seriously tubby tubby tuba in that that uh that Brookner I've got. Played one once, don't recall needing tons of air, played one. Well, you don't need tons of air with any tuba. It just depends on how loud you want to play and whatnot. Uh it's it just it's a very open tuba. It's it fe almost feels maybe because of the rotors, uh, but just it speaks very quickly and easily and openly. Um, but it also doesn't have. <sighs> There's something about the American style tuba that in the sound that I like better than the German. The German's more of a direct sound through the rotary valves, but the something about the piston valves that just sort of puffs it up and makes it sound, uh, yeah, more velvety and, and, and oompa, darker. I like that. Yeah. See you, Steve. Good to see you. So, Peter, are you still there? Did you update? I mean, I was talking about my computers. I don't know if you're still listening, Peter, but... Uh, yeah, I saw that you have an M1. Uh, I got an M1... Uh, what do they call it? The the really light one, the MacBook Air. MacBook Air for my wife. Because uh, it was like $300 off, like a super special or something. Uh, so it was like 800 bucks, but you know, 256 hard drive. No, I got her the 512, and uh, that and that that little thing cruises faster than all my computers. It's better than all of my computers, every single one of them. Um, so at some point here, I'm going to have to upgrade. Uh, I think that my work will probably end up getting me a new desktop. Uh, yeah, so what, one of my Mac Pros is owned by my work and one's owned personally by me, the trash can ones. Um, but then I have got tons of laptops and other ones sitting, laying around here. Uh, but the laptops work better than the trash cans. The trash cans are very specific. The reason why I like them is because they can hook up to multiple screens and audio interfaces and my keyboard all at once. And, it, you know, even though it's a really old computer, 10 years old now, it can multitask like a beast, that thing. It can, it can still do it. Yeah, good to see you too, Peter. You're using a GH4 too. That's excellent. Yeah, the focus on the Panasonics is not great. Yeah. So you're thinking about that new one, the S5. See, I don't want to get into another lens system, Peter. That's the problem with that. I think that new Panasonic looks tremendous. It looks so cool. And I like Panasonic's better than Sony's in their menu system and their ergonomics and their buttons and, and all those things. I really do. I like them much better. Uh, they probably have a better image in a way too, their color science or whatnot than Sony's. Um, but those are the, the two systems that I'm in on are Micro Four Thirds and Panasonic. Uh, I think I have one Olympus lens and maybe a few kind of cheapo lenses that I got just for fun, but but I have almost all of the Panasonic high-end lenses for Micro Four Thirds. I probably have 15 lenses, all the fastest lenses for Micro Four Thirds. And then for Sony, I have the full-frame A system, so I've got a A7R3. Uh, this camera that I'm talking on right now is an a7 III. Uh, I have the a7s III, which is just phenomenal as a video camera and even as a stills camera 12, I don't, 12 megapixels but man that camera is just super fast focus um, and it's like a miracle low light camera like beyond anything so I don't know yeah I'm intrigued by that too but but I have all those Sony lenses I'm 
I'm like $25,000 in on Sony lenses and probably 20 grand in Panasonic lenses. <laughs> so like, like in the Micro Four Thirds lenses. So I can't see myself getting into the, the Leica lens system for the Panasonic full frames or, you know, moving to Fujifilm. Uh, I couldn't see myself doing that. Um, so I'm kind of stuck with Micro Four Thirds and Sony and I'm, I'm actually happy I made those two choices. So uh, the Micro th Four Thirds have worked great here in my studio. Believe it or not, I mean, you probably know, I've got a GH5, GH4, 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 GH5. Um, I've got some of these little Chinese Micro Four Thirds cameras that they don't even build anymore that, that work pretty well. Like they actually work pretty well. Uh, and all, I've got all these different cameras in here and I never turn them off. Like this studio, I, I leave this studio turned on like all the time, Peter, like all the time. Like I never turn stuff off. Um, so some of these GH4s have literally almost been turned on for the last eight or nine years. Like never, never turn them off. And there they are, they just work. If this one's working, it's on an Edelchrome slider. It's going beep, 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 beep. But, you know, they're amazing. They just, they're, they just, they never stop. Well, it's hard to buy things these days with inflation and all that, you know. I guess, Peter, I, you're retired or, I don't know, but you, I don't know much about you personally other than, you know, cause I like watch your videos for for information and stuff, but uh, are you still working as a photographer or like making money with your, uh, uh, are you still making money using those cameras or is it more just a hobby and a fun thing for you? Um, Cause I don't make any money doing this. Well, that's one of the reasons I don't do it. <laughs> but, oh yeah, you have Nikons. Yeah, yeah, Micro Four Thirds. Yeah, you have to do it slowly and you'd almost want to, I mean, once you really, really make the choice, why, why would you want to keep all that equipment? It's like you would want to start selling it so you can sort of repurpose that investment in the new system. So and that's what I think I would do if I really had to go to a new system of cameras, I would probably start selling off one of my systems because it's just... Even even now, the way I, I don't do much filmmaking, I used to do a lot more run and gun filmmaking for work and different things, and I would use all my own equipment. Um, but now, since I don't do that so much, I would definitely start trading them out if I decided to do something like that. And I'd, I'd almost want to go all Sony because Panasonic's just always let me down with the autofocus but I do like the little lenses so you can you can pack a pretty sweet setup in a small bag with the micro four thirds that is a good that is a good thing for those you're going to be 70 in October well congratulations fully retired that's excellent three or four channels yeah I do enjoy them I do enjoy them I think I'm subscribed to two of your channels uh one of them you do cooking and then your photography one that I watch with the Christmas room. <laughs> that's the other one that I think I didn't know you had three or four. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I'll look at that. Yeah, I'm sure there's links in some of your other videos. I'll, I'll take a look at that, Peter. Uh, well, I'm glad you're retired. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, you're, you're doing better on YouTube than I do, than I do. But of course, you are constantly doing things on it, which is great. That's, you know, for me, I, I, I'm just not motivated. You know, I end up going on still really late at night cause I still have younger kids and, uh, I work at home and I work strange hours. A lot of the time I often will work at night, which is the time where I would be sitting here talking to the box, you know? So, and I, I don't, I don't know. I don't see myself ever retiring. I just, this world's tough. And I feel like I, to give my kids a good shot, I've got to really 
work my butt off. <laughs> so I'm doing my best. We'll see what happens. I, I don't think there's a whole lot of time left in this world anyway, uh, but I try to live life like, like there will still be another hundred years to go. So, um, but if I'm a realist about it, I think Christ is coming very soon. <laughs> so in my lifetime, and maybe even in the next decade or so, who knows? It's a crazy world out there right now. So, but congratulations in uh, turning turning seventy. That's excellent. I'm about to turn forty nine. So seven times seven, the uh, uh, I guess the golden number of forty nine, because seven is a really cool number biblically speaking. Just relax, enjoy the journey. As they say. It's like therapy, like you say. The world these days is strange. Strange as can be. Waiting for his return. Yeah, I agree. Oh, man, I can't wait. There's going to be a lot of bad things that happen before he comes, but uh, this world's always been in need of peace, and the first time he came was just wonderful what he did, but just absolutely terrible what they did to him. And... Uh, They'll try to do it this next time, but he's going to come in glory with a two-edged sword and all of his saints, and that's going to be something, you know, when the world's right at the brink of total destruction, he's going to come back. That's going to be pretty awesome. I can't wait. Well, good seeing you. It's, uh, what time is it? How long have I been on? I think YouTube tells us how long we've been on, doesn't it? says somewhere on here but I don't see where it says maybe it says on my little other device I don't even know I don't know how long I've been on it doesn't say I think I think if I move things around I'll see it yeah oh 47 minutes okay not bad not bad I just came on to see if things still worked I didn't even know if anyone was going to come in and talk to me and I'm so glad that you did yeah you too Peter like God bless you and all the things that you're doing. Uh, keep up the cool camera stuff. Keep us posted. And uh, yeah, the GH4 still works, believe it or not. And, and the focus isn't too terrible. It's not too terrible. All right, well, I'm signing off. This is some weird music, so I'm going to turn it up because it's cool. And um, as I sign off, I got to show you the hound cam, Peter. If you're still on, Peter, let me show you. Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, Mac Pro Desk, because she's just fast asleep. But I, I have now the Hound Cam. There she is. That's Mabel the Hound, or at least the back part of Mabel. My wonderful, terrifying, but sweet coon hound girl. That's the cat. That's, I don't know. And then back to me. Yeah, yeah, I love dogs. Well, I remember your dog, Peter. You had the saddest story, buddy. Oh, man. Oh, I remember when your dog died and just, man, I felt so bad for you. Uh, this, was it Mr. Jingles was the name of the dog? Oh, man, I can't remember. It might have been something like that. That's such a cute little guy. We, we have a little terrier that's about 13 pounds. She's 15 years old, still just smart and wonderful as ever. Skin and bones, because she's like probably got diabetes and things wrong with her because she's such an old dog. But that's like our favorite dog, Lexi. We've got a little dog. Um, and we have another little dog that's like a chihuahua mix. She's a little bit crazy, but very sweet very cute and very soft and cuddly um, and then there's the hound that we have so anyway i'm signing off i love you my friends peter steve the other person who's viewing there's one other person viewing but not talking whoever you are uh we're, i'm signing off here but it was just great to come in here and try this out again and uh good night to you have a wonderful evening and uh, keep listening to good music and watching good YouTube videos. Uh, 
obviously not this one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I want to sign off now. Uh, Dylan, uh, Tuba Dylan.